Today I'm going to give you some tips on installing CentOS ready for Splunk uh, as a heavyweight forwarder syslog collector. I'll show you how to get the script uh, I'm sharing on GitLab um, and run that on the local machine. It's designed to run on a base installation uh, and essentially within two or three minutes um, it will give you a running uh, Splunk heavyweight forwarder with syslog ng in the background to collect syslog. Uh, the first couple of minutes via the video will be running through setting up CentOS. Uh, there'll be another four or five minutes of showing you through the script, and then a couple of minutes at the end just to run you through the Splunk configuration as it looks in Splunk after the script is run. This video is not on the whole installation of CentOS. The idea is just to give you a bit of a grounding and a couple of tips for way to set up the drive. So I'll assume you've booted the machine uh, and ready to do the installation. So the part with particular focus is just on the disk partitioning. So by default CentOS gives you a large home partition, um, which isn't always best when you're trying to put large amounts of logs um, into var log. So just uh, running through the configuration here of how to set this up. So you can use the, um, the default configuration option to start with. Um, and essentially all we do here, just as a tip, you'll see at the top it's slash homes around 70 gig. We obviously want that for logs. Um, it's best to run your logs into var log or another mount point. So um, if you're running it all on this local machine, just delete this home partition um, out of there. And then what we'll do is we'll move those 70 gigs into the slash partition. This allows you to have uh, obviously much more storage in the place that you need it. Uh, and there's nothing wasted. I'm just showing this because I've had a couple of customers um, bump into this, um, just to so you don't fall into this pitfall. So we'll just increase on the right hand side, increase the disk size to match. Just click the uh, update settings and you'll see in the bottom left now we've only got one gig of available space and everything's gone into that uh, slash partition there. We'll just click done. And we'll just confirm what's happened in the UI, just accept the changes, they'll match what we've done there. Um, also with the network, uh, by default networking is turned off on CentOS when you install it um, and also the host name is local host. So just set the host name here uh, to one that you will use. Um, and just tick the box there to enable the lo enable the uh, the IP stack, and then we'll get an IP address on this machine. Once we're done here, we'll just uh, set the date and time uh, settings. The reason that, that obviously with a, a syslog aggregator or a logging system, we want to make sure that we've got the right timestamp um, and everything on the events that are coming out of this machine. Um, it makes the time uh, up in Splunk line up a lot better, obviously, if you're all local. So I sped this part up um, just to save you sitting through the installation process of CentOS because uh, it's not particularly exciting. And at the end of this we'll just get to the CentOS desktop um, and then we'll move into GitLab. Um, I'll put the link in the description to the to the files here displayed. Um, there's one script for CentOS 7 and one for CentOS 8. The main reason for that is moving away from yum uh, in CentOS 8, so we move to dpackage. Um, the script is here. I obviously recommend you read through the script, don't just download and run it. Um, it does work by default, um, but just be aware of what any script does on your machine, not just mine. To get to the raw information here, open on the right hand side, you've got open raw, and this will take you to the text file. So just copy the URL at the top of this page. Um, that will bring down uh, the script um, into your host that you want to run the script on, and then we can um, run through and set up all of the configuration here. Like I say, have a read through the script before you run it. Um, I've run it many times without any issues, but obviously if you've got existing configuration um, or you're, you're um, new, to the, new to this part of the world, just read through there as well. You can also add things and delete things as you need. So now we're into the um, running the script on the local machine. So we're just SSH into the machine we created before. You see we're just in the directory for me. Um, there's nothing else in there. We'll just paste the URL in from the top of the page that we looked at before with the script. So now you can see the script is there between the folders HWF Splunk CentOS 8. And what this will do, um, by default when you download it, it's not executable. So we just need to chmod plus x, which gives it execution rights. You see it's turned green um, in the view there. Now what we'll do is we'll just clear the screen to make it easy for you guys to see. So just to make sure the file downloaded um, correctly, we just use head and then we can see the top of the file here. The, you'll see the password is in the top there. Um, and if we do tail, we'll see the bottom. So this uh, bottom of the script here, these are some sample files, uh, sorry, sample events from different types of syslog. 
Um, down at the bottom here do make a note of this, if you're making a golden image make sure you run this command um, uh, that avoids having uh, UID clashes for Splunk. So we'll just run um, run the script now, just type my password in, sudo is required unless you root because we do some changes to the firewall and huge pages and things like that. So here we're just opening the port so you see the top part has um, has the ports that are open and then it shows you the ports that are freshly opened. We're just installing um, or removing and installing our syslog and installing syslog ng. Um, also adding things uh, the useful uh, during investigation on the heavy folder, TCB dump and those kind of things to see um, uh, multi-tail as well for looking at multiple logs. So this is running through um, just installing the additional applications. We've got through now um, to downloading Splunk so it's going to reach out, pull down the Splunk tarball. This is all going into slash opt you'll see in the script um, so it goes into slash opt, it'll put Splunk there. It's untiring Splunk now into slash opt slash Splunk is where you'll find it. Once it's untied it, it reaches out and downloads some um, some apps to put into the heavy folder for common syslog types, so such as such as Windows and Cisco and those kind of things. Um, so they're already installed. Splunk spun up now. We're just waiting for the UI to start. So in the bottom right, you'll see we've got a little empty browser page, but um, we'll soon get some Splunk in there. This is the multi-tail um, application that runs, so you can tail multiple files. So you'll see we've got some um, some Fortinet test events in the top right there, and a catch-all test event on the left. And in the bottom right, we've got the Splunk um, Splunk log running as well. So in the bottom right, we'll just see um, it's a self-signed certificate, obviously for Splunk, unless you do it yourself um, with a fully signed certificate. Um, so just accept that. And then uh, in the bottom right, you can see the UIs here. So all of that in about two minutes from an empty CentOS machine to syslog ng listening on port 514, um, parsing some events and passing them into the correct folders for Splunk to pick up. So we'll log into Splunk UI now and we'll just take a look at what was configured from the file. As you can see these in the script as well. Um, we, we push some configuration into some text files within the script. Um, they're all within an app. Um, in Splunk, we we'll just do the click-throughs here to get through to the details. So on the left you'll see the apps that have been installed by the script, so there's the Palo Alto and Crash Strike apps, um, plus a couple more that don't show up in the UI. So in the settings we'll go down, we'll look at the indexes here, so um, the for the events to be uh, picked up easily, we just create the indexes here, so there's the Cisco, Juniper, um, and they're all within the Syslog uh, Monitors app. So if we go to the inputs, so that's where the data is going to go, essentially. So we're going to route that out, um, then look at the files and directories we're monitoring. Down at the bottom here we've got all of our paths, so var logs, Splunk logs, and then uh, again from the Juniper, uh, sorry, from the Syslog app. And then you'll see there's a number of files there as well, so there's one file for each of those um, just there. And then for the configuring receiving, we can see that 9797 is open. So if you've got any universal forwarders that are going to send data to this heavy forwarder, um, then you can. we know we're going to receive those events and pass them on um, or index them. So if you want to make this into a standalone one box wonder machine, you can add a license here, um, whether it's a developer license or a trial license. Um, you can also change it to a slave. So um, we'll add a license here as an example. So you can copy and paste the text here. Uh, the XML text into this box, or you can choose a file from your local machine if you've got a developer license, you can upload it that way. And like I say, if you want to change it to a slave in a production environment, or you've got a, a licensing master, you choose the um, the option here and just input the URL or IP address followed by the port uh, into this box and click save, and then it will just validate. Uh, normally, you need to restart if it's the first time you're doing a license, um, but from there, you should be good to go.